Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to today's webinar on Generative AI for CX or Customer Experience. Uh, I'm Shal Gupta, VP of Product at Natomi. In today's webinar, we will be covering generally about GPT, Generative AI, and LLMs. I'll give you a quick brief background on these, these terms. Uh, we'll talk about how generative AI can be applied to customer experience. Uh, we'll also talk about how generative AI and conversational AI uh, can work in tandem for customer experience. I'll also share some of our observations and we'll wrap up with uh, questions if uh, there are any. So again, thank you for joining and uh, let's get into it. So many of you may have noticed uh, ChatGPT appeared on the cover of Times Magazine uh, recently just goes to highlight you know, how popular this has become very quickly. I believe in a matter of about five days, there are like a million or so users already using ChatGPT. It also highlights uh, the potential importance uh, this technology, uh, generative AI in general, could be playing in our lives across different applications. For some basic context, uh, ChatGPT comes from the uh, same family of GPT AI models from OpenAI. And these models are built using massive amounts of, of knowledge and data. And they're purpose built to generate human like text. So, with this type of capability, it lends itself nicely to things like uh, text summarization, language translation, and then, of course, generating text for applications like chatbots. Uh, broadly speaking, uh, these technologies fall under the umbrella of uh, generative AI. So, you know, by its very meaning, generative means it can actually produce uh, content. It's a set of uh, AI algorithms that can be used to create, uh, actually create new content. Um, so this new content could be video, audio, uh, actually even write code, um, text, and even generate art, as you've probably seen. Uh, things like Dolly and Stable uh, Diffusion do um, if, you've, if you've caught up with the news recently. And what's interesting about generative AI is that it it's almost mimics how human beings would, would create and produce content. Um, and that's what makes this so fascinating. Uh, ChatGPT in particular is an example of text generation AI focusing specifically on conversational tasks. And uh, just to step back also, uh, if you look at the landscape, it's gotten pretty, uh, pretty busy with a lot of applications out there leveraging generative, generative AI for lots of, lots of applications. Uh, conversational uh, experiences in the context of customer experience uh, is at least uh, in, in our opinion, gonna be a massive uh, application of this technology as well. So we expect to see more application of generative AI in in customer experience and a lot more applications coming out as well. Now, what is behind uh, the generative AI? Um, there's there, the, the ultimate source of this information is what is called a large language model or LLM for short. And these are deep learning algorithms that have been built using, again, massive amounts of data. So think, you know, feeding it almost the entire internet, if you will. Um, and using this, this knowledge, these models uh, then learn and they can recognize, summarize, translate, predict, and generate text based on, on this knowledge. Uh, just to give you an idea of the order of magnitude, uh, GPT-3, uh, which is the model from OpenAI, was released in, uh, I believe, June of 2020. That has over 175 billion parameters. So massive data sets. And again, the, the interesting thing here is that it can actually, using the knowledge it has sort of gained, sort of like a human being, produce almost, I would say, original new content. Um, in order to interact with an LLM, you basically provided an input or a prompt, which is basically you know, asking it a question. And the LLM then, using its knowledge that it's gathered from, from all of the data that it has um, understood and extracted uh, its knowledge from, it generates the, the output. So it's basically a, a prompt to an output uh, um, interaction. So, you know, with these text generation capabilities, um, a customer experience scenario usually involves a lot of text interactions going back and forth. So uh, an application of generative AI and customer experience would seem like a very obvious use of this technology. Um, and we'll talk about how that can be done 
there are also certain shortcomings that we need to be aware of uh, as we do consider using generative AI for customer experience. So uh, let's walk through what uh, some of those shortcomings uh, are. So firstly, these large language models are more general built using the available or publicly available uh, information. So they're not specific to a, a business. In, in this situation, you know, it's hard for a general standalone large language model to, to do anything that would be specific for, uh, for a business. So it certainly has those limitations. Uh, secondly, it's not connected to your business system. So doing things like completing transactions or uh, doing end-to-end -end resolutions for customer service requests, those really can't be accomplished. And then it's not really plugged into the interfaces that your customers are using to communicate with you. So be it messaging channels, email, voice, whatever that might be, they're not connected to, to the front end interfaces uh, where your customers uh, uh, would be reaching out to you. And then lastly, there's no real collaboration with human agents. So there's no way for, for generative AI to just escalate to a, to a human agent. Now, with all of these shortcomings, uh, the counterpart of generative AI, which is conversational AI, addresses some of these in, in very specific, specific ways. So the, the models that are built uh, using conversational AI platforms are, are specific for a particular business. You have well-defined process and flows that get customers to specific outcomes. Uh, they are connected and they can be connected to your business systems. So you have the opportunity to drive contextual conversations, do full resolutions and, and complete transactions um, um, uh, like order bookings, flight bookings and things like that. And then you can of course plug conversational AI platforms into the front end channels where your customers are interacting. So again, the email, chat, voice, whatever that might be, you can plug in these systems into your contact centers and, and other channels to actually have AI participate uh, in these conversations. And then lastly, conversational AI platforms give you the opportunity to um, escalate to human agents when needed. So the collaboration with agents um, is there the ability to do agent handover and agent augmentation are things that the conversational AI platforms are able to provide. And if you look at the business outcomes that need to be delivered, um, that's specifically what conversational AI platforms are purpose built for, right? So in, be it the front end channels, integrating with the systems, using well-defined user journeys, uh, driven by company policy and, and, and being on brand, the quality of the conversation or the specifics of that conversation, all of the necessary guardrails can be put in place so your conversational AI actually delivers the specific business outcomes um, that you're looking for. So you've got you know, the, the fluid generative AI on one side and you've got the more structured conversational AI on the other side. So it would, it would make sense to have these two technologies work in tandem to produce a net benefit in the customer experience journey. Um, so let's look at a few ways in which these two technologies can work together for a net positive uh, impact on customer experience. So one area is just around acceleration. Um, so a lot of things that conversational AI platforms require is, you know, uh, training the AI model, providing it uh, input on different uh, intent sentences, um, lexicon entries or entities, Building, building user flows, building conversation, uh, building sample conversations for simulation. These are things that generative AI can now do very easily given the vast amount of data it has. So from an acceleration standpoint, this is a, a nice addition to a conversational platform uh, where it can uh, uh, utilize or leverage generative AI for, for tasks like this. So it, the, it certainly shortens the, the time needed for, for these types of tasks as you're, as you're building virtual agents. Uh, secondly, you can leverage, leverage con, uh, generative AI for massaging responses um, that are being sent out to your users. Um, you can also, uh, instead of just relying on static or hard-coded responses, introduce a level of dynamic uh, response creation. So this helps virtual agents be you know, less robotic, um, and it, it certainly introduces a, a more natural conversation uh, that AI uh, virtual agents are able to have uh, with, with your customers. 
And then I would say with uh, structured knowledge bases, um, if you feed structured and well-defined knowledge bases into generative AI, you can actually extract better quality answers that can be served up to customers. So you end up building better end interactions uh, using generative AI alongside conversational AI. And then lastly, on the agent assistance side, um, it, it's a good use to rely on generative AI to do things like sentiment anal analysis, where you've got uh, agents that have an easier access to how the sentiment for a particular conversation may be progressing. Um, also getting suggested replies from, uh, from the generative AI so they don't have to spend too much time drafting or writing responses themselves. And then also getting summary, on-point summary for um, long and verbose conversations so they can pinpoint um, specific areas that they, that they need to focus on. Uh, just using one example of how uh, conversational AI and generative AI could work together is, is in cases, in use cases where there is uh, sensitive data involved. So, you know, for example, if a customer is going to be providing um, social security numbers, credit card numbers, date of birth, you certainly don't want to feed that directly into a generative AI platform. Now, if you have the conversational AI platform, what it initially does is it removes sensitive information. Uh, and it creates what's called like a sanitized prompt, right? And alongside the sanitized prompt, it can add layers of, you know, the intent uh, recognition, any of the conversational context, and the sanitized prompt can then be fed into the generative AI to actually produce, you know, a, a well-crafted natural sounding response. So you've handled kind of like the privacy side and security side with uh, conversational AI, and then you've leveraged the generative uh, AI's capability to produce uh, good quality, natural sounding uh, conversation. So it's, it's a good way to see these two technologies work together in this fashion. So uh, to wrap up then, you know, I'll share some observations uh, that we have um, in this space and in the potential impacts on, on customer experience. So firstly, I think, uh, you know, anyone who's interacted with chat GPD has been, I would say, pleasantly surprised at the quality of the conversation. So we used to look at AI bots as being very uh, robotic, monotonous in how they would have a conversation, but now ChatGPT has demonstrated that generative AI can produce very natural conversation. So this, this has elevated the expectations for, for everyone in general. And what we expect from um, automated uh, AI virtual agents is going to be, those expectations are going to be uh, a lot higher. And, and the, the, I would say the good thing here is that the effort now needed to produce these higher quality conversations is fairly low. So, you know, basically there would be no excuse for, for anyone to produce um, unnatural or robotics uh, sounding um, AI driven conversations when this can be done fairly easily. Uh, secondly, you know, there's a lot of entertainment value that we've we've seen through these uh, chat GPT type of conversations, but business outcomes are always going to trump the entertainment value. You know, so again, standalone general purpose uh, LLMs that are not uh, taking into account uh, business context, they they won't find themselves in 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 terms of being able to produce any productive value. So contextually correct uh, generative AI is is truly going to be game changing. Um, and then the third area is the agent assistance. Um, this behind the scenes productivity, um, uh, behind the scenes activity that, that can drive a lot of productivity, we feel is going to be a significant area where a lot of, I would say a lot of uh, good innovation and productive innovation can be done. Uh, the interesting thing about this is that because it is happening behind the scenes, you always have kind of like a human in the loop that is acting as the guardrail. So anytime there's uh, uh, suggestions being offered by generative AI, summarizations being, uh, being offered by uh, the generative AI, there is a human being that is looking at these um, and then deciding what to do next. Um, so again, I think the behind the scenes activity, a lot of times we, we don't recognize the value that's being generated there, but uh, this is a, a big, big area where we see a lot of opportunity to do, uh, to do good work and, and introduce efficiencies for customer experience. Um, and then lastly, uh, you know, accuracy and security is going to be very important. So a lot of the open domain systems that are out there um, that 
and, and a lot of folks have been using them for a variety of purposes, you know, one has to recognize that these models have been fed a lot of data that is generally and publicly available. It is full of biases, it is full of inaccuracies, and that introduces risks if you are attempting to use these directly. So as a standalone, um, these, these um, open, open domain uh, LLMs are, are not, not, I would say, recommended to be used as is. Uh, you may have uh, read about some of the challenges uh, the, the you know, largest software or search companies uh, faced after they introduced some of the generative AI into their search algorithms. Um, it went sideways on a few occasions. So it makes it even more important to make sure to make sure that the controls and the guardrails are in place uh, if you are going to attempt to use these uh, as a part of your customer experience um, uh, journey. So with that, uh, that wraps up the uh, material that I was uh, wanting to share and present. I hope you found this information useful. Um, I'll just see if there are any questions from the audience. Uh, when would it make sense to just use generative AI um, as is in terms of having direct conversations with, with end users? Uh, so the short answer is that if there are scenarios where you do not expect a, or, or the risk or the impact to your brand is minimal, um, and that's, you have to assess on a case by case basis, then certainly you could consider using it for what I would call the last mile uh, conversation, right? So between the platform and the end user. Um, so it could be just general greetings or basic, you know, um, basic informational exchange. But anytime you perceive uh, the risk is going to be much higher, where generative AI could potentially provide information or respond in a way that is not on topic, not on brand, you certainly don't want to leave generative AI um, on its own to interact with your, with your customers uh, directly. Uh, there is one other question around uh, just the agent productivity piece. Um, uh, just asking, you know, what, what are the areas where we're seeing the biggest uptake for, for generative AI? Um, so the, uh, I, I would say two, two areas or say three areas. Uh, one is uh, summarization. So in scenarios where the AI is having a conversation uh, initially, and now the AI has to hand off the conversation to a human agent, uh, creating a summary using generative AI that focuses on you know, specific points of the conversation that the agent can then reference very quickly. Um, that's one use case we're seeing a lot of interest in that we're also incorporating into our product. Uh, the other area is uh, just in uh, paraphrasing or rephrasing some of the responses as the uh, agents are, uh, are typing uh, the response. So they could put in a short sentence and the generative AI can, can produce a better sounding reply. Um, so that's, that's the other area that uh, we're, we're seeing um, the assistance piece uh, come in. And then also uh, the third area is just the, you know, out the gate suggested reply. So even before an agent um, types up a response, just based on the conversation context, uh, the generative AI is able to offer a, a few suggested reply options that the agent can then pick and then quickly modify and then uh, reply back to the user. So thank you again. Uh, I, I believe those were uh, the questions that we, we had and I hope this was helpful. Uh, certainly look forward to sharing more information as this uh, technology continues to evolve and emerge. And we're excited to, uh, to be offering some of these generative AI capabilities in the, near in the very near future in our product as well. Thank you for joining. <laughs>